so much has already changed in the aftermath of the assassination attempt against Donald Trump, and that moment has proven to be pivotal in this election cycle for a number of reasons. He's getting sympathetic responses from both Democrats and Republicans. Biden has chosen to suspend campaign ads against Donald Trump, and on top of that, the media is giving him fawning coverage in the aftermath of that assassination attempt. Now, putting that aside, we learned today that Judge Eileen Cannon, a judge who Trump appointed, by the way, dismissed the documents case against him entirely. And he's going into the convention this week with his supporters more galvanized than ever after he announced J.D. Vance as his running mate, who is for sure going to be much more loyal in carrying out the MAGA agenda than Mike Pence ever was. Now, on top of that, he's grown his lead against Biden in nearly every single swing state. And odds are, post-assassination attempt polls are going to look even better for Donald Trump. But that's not all, because the events over the weekend have essentially locked things in place on the Democratic Party's side, meaning that Trump is almost certainly going to be facing the weakest opponent possible, and that's Joe Biden. Now, I say this because the opposition to Joe Biden within the Democratic Party has collectively chosen to surrender in the aftermath of this Trump assassination attempt. And they're saying that it's just not the right time to be pursuing the ouster of Biden or trying to get him, get him to drop out when really we should be bringing down the temperature of the country. Axios reports, quote, we're all just focused on expressing condolences and keeping our team safe, said one House Democrat who has been fiercely critical of Biden. A senior House Democrat suggested the post-shooting atmosphere in the party is too chaotic for internal battles over leadership. Another Democrat said it would be unpatriotic and unprincipled to direct energy to anything other than yesterday's national tragedy over the coming days. The only conversation about President Biden should be about how he can console our country, address the anger, and meet the moment. Another Biden skeptical Democrat asked about lingering questions around the president's candidacy told Axios, I don't think that's the focus right now. So that assassination attempt really did change things for Democrats because now they don't want to focus on infighting and Joe Biden. They want to focus on, you know, making sure that Americans and their staffers all feel better about this really volatile climate that we're in. And I understand the sentiment in the aftermath of this weekend, of course, but that doesn't change the underlying fact that there's an election to be won against a fascist who does pose an existential threat to American democracy. And if Biden stays on the ticket, he is almost certainly going to lose. So the question is, do you just give up all of a sudden and accept defeat because of what happened? The answer apparently is yes. Axios continues, quote, most lawmakers who spoke to Axios said it is too early to say whether the cessation intentions will last until the Democratic National Convention next month. But the second senior House Democrat offered one reason for why it might, quote, we've all resigned ourselves to a second Trump presidency. Wow. So they're just giving up and accepting a Trump victory in November, I guess. In other words, the fate of American democracy has been sealed. It's over. All because weak, pathetic Democrats don't feel like it's the right time to pressure Biden to drop out for the good of the country. Let me remind you, this is a senior Democrat who's saying this, who's saying we've all just pretty much accepted it's over and Trump's going to win. Now, I kind of already got the sense that this was where they were at, but you're not supposed to say that out loud because other elected Democrats need to think that they're constantly fighting Republicans in order to get us to send them our money. You know, so Democrats admitting this kind of pissed off other Democrats, AOC being one of them who tweeted, if you're a senior Democrat that feels this way, you should absolutely retire and make space for true leadership that refuses to resign themselves to fascism. This kind of leadership is functionally useless to the American people. Retire. Yeah, except here's the problem. You're calling on the wrong person to retire. Don't get me wrong. I think it's absolutely pathetic that a senior Democrat is unilaterally disarming and just saying, fuck it, you know, Trump's going to win, so I'm giving up. But the reason why that person is giving up in part is because of people like you, AOC. You've tried to shut down the conversation about Biden needing to drop out. But, you know, she's not alone, though, because other progressives like Bernie Sanders have been doing the same. Bernie Sanders wrote an entire op-ed in The New York Times defending Joe Biden, insisting that he should remain the Democratic Party's nominee. Now, part of the reason why progressives have reportedly come to Biden's defense is because he has promised them policy concessions if he gets a second term, such as expanding Medicare and uh, abolishing medical debt, which all sounds great. And while I appreciate progressives hyper focus on policy there's a couple of reasons why they're making a miscalculation here. First of all, 
Biden didn't follow through on so many of the promises that he made the first time he ran. He ran on a public option. Remember that? He said fuck all about the public option after he won. So I just don't trust him. Second of all, even if I believed that he supported these policies, the problem is he's not willing to abolish the filibuster to pass these policies. But most importantly, he can't pass any of these policies if he loses the fucking election to Donald Trump. That's the biggest thing here, which is highly likely if he stays in the race. But it's especially gross to see progressives bend over backwards to bail out a president who is complicit with a literal genocide. All they have to do is sit back and zip their lips. Let the centrist Democrats do the work for them to get Biden out. But instead, they're trying to stop the people who want to win from replacing Biden. It is so infuriating to see this. Now, with that being said, if Bernie Sanders and AOC got a real concrete concession immediately from Biden, I could understand why they would do something like this, why they would stick their necks on the line for Joe Biden. If Bernie Sanders, for example, told Biden, look, you want me to write this op-ed? I need a concession right now, immediately. I need you to withdraw all weapons from Israel until they stop their genocide. If you do that, then I'm going to write this op-ed. Then I'm going to try to bail you out. Because that is a realistic concession that Biden can deliver to them right now. But that didn't happen. In fact, they got no concessions with regard to Gaza, even if Biden were to win a second term. Biden just sent them, uh, sent Israel 500 pound bombs. So instead, progressives settled for future broken promises. It's just, <laughs> it's laughable because, look, I agree with Bernie Sanders and AOC on almost every single policy issue, but goddamn are their political instincts dog shit. Now, here's the thing. Democrats aren't just begrudgingly resigned to a Trump presidency despite the threat that he poses to democracy. Uh, some of them, they just don't give a shit. They don't actually care if Trump wins. And I say this because Tim Miller shared a transcript from a recent episode of his Bulwark podcast where he interviewed Ezra Klein of the New York Times. And Ezra Klein confirmed before the Axios report that top Democrats were already resigned to a Trump presidency even before the assassination attempt. But this transcript confirms something even more alarming. And I'm going to play the audio of the transcript that you're seeing right now. You don't know how the party can replace him. You don't want to be blamed for any of this. You just stay quiet and walk the calm path to defeat. I think it is clear, like people are like weighing the set of things like it would be quite unpleasant for me personally to come out against the president um, as a elected official in the Democratic Party and weighing what will happen if Donald Trump wins and saying in a revealed preference way, I can live with Donald Trump winning. And I've had people say that to me off the record, to be fair. I've had really I have had top Democrats say to me basically something like, I don't know why all these Democrats who think Donald Trump is an existential threat to democracy are acting the way they are. But the reason I'm acting the way I am is because I don't think that. Who the fuck is this? Who are these people? Out your sources, Ezra. I'm in, I'm I about was, to be in leaking text mode over here myself. Like, that is crazy. <laughs> That's great. Why? I, I guess it's consistent, but it's maddening. No? I find it maddening. But I, I do find it consistent. So top Democrats are admitting behind the scenes that they've been lying to us this whole time. They actually don't think that Trump is an existential threat to democracy. So that's why some of them aren't acting with the urgency that you would expect, right, to replace Biden to beat Trump. But the reason why they say that is because they're going to be OK if Trump is elected. Trump is an existential threat to democracy. But that doesn't really change their lives significantly. They're rich. Nothing Trump could do would really hurt them as much as it would hurt us. Be it Project 2025, cutting Social Security, Medicare, banning gay marriages or trans health care, they're going to be fine. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're OK with a Trump victory. Perhaps they still don't want him to win. But this mentality right here where it's like, eh, I'm fine either way, that explains why they're willing to throw in the towel so quickly. They're not fighting like everything is at stake because they don't believe that everything is at stake. Now, to put into perspective how bad the situation is for Biden in particular, a YouGov poll conducted on the 12th shows him losing in every single swing state, including Rust Belt states like Michigan and Wisconsin, that he's banking on for a path to 270. But here's what's even more astonishing about this poll. In the same poll, Democrats competing in Senate races are absolutely crushing their Republican opponents, which is more of an indication that Biden is the problem. Now, on top of that, a poll conducted by the New York Times 
Times and Siena College finds that a majority of Democrats and independents in Virginia and a majority of independents in Pennsylvania all want Biden to drop out. Now, Democrats in Pennsylvania are basically split with a slight plurality leaning towards Biden staying in the race. So this problem is not going to go away. Joe Biden is the problem and him staying in the race for self-serving reasons damns all of us to a second Trump term. Democrats know this. Republicans know this. But apparently some Democrats have chosen to just give up and seal our fate. It's spineless, but it's so unsurprising, you know. Um, so the situation is bleak, but there is still hope, believe it or not. Politico reports, quote, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, convinced Biden will lose, has been working the phone since June 27th in hopes of finding a way to ease him off the ticket. One of her colleagues was struck to see her chatting furtively but openly with minority leader Hakeem Jeffries last week in a corner of the House Democratic cloakroom in plain sight of a dozen lawmakers. The extent of Pelosi's behind the scenes role hasn't been fully revealed and may never be if the former speaker has her way. But I'm told by people familiar with the exchanges that she's stage managed phone calls to Jeffries, plotted strategy with the biggest names in Democratic politics, and told one former elected official bluntly that Biden's legacy can't be destroying their party. So I really never thought that I'd say this, but our only hope at this point is Nancy Pelosi. Literally. She's working behind the scenes to get Democrats to come to their senses and stop Biden from handing Trump a second term. Now, the caveat is that reports about her doing all of this came before the Trump assassination attempt. So we don't know if she, like other Democrats, stopped working behind the scenes following the events from the weekend. But odds are she's more clear-eyed than all the other Democrats because, remember, this is somebody who also experienced something that Trump experienced. Somebody showed up to her house to assassinate her, but her husband was there and he was beaten with a hammer instead. So Trump wasted no time making fun of her and her husband after that happened. So she might be one of the few Democrats who uniquely thinks it's not unpatriotic to continue to pressure Joe Biden to drop out. She might be one of the only Democrats who understands that this changes nothing politically speaking. Trump is still a threat and he can't win this election. She knows the threat that Trump poses, and she's actually still trying to do something about it, presumably. So I never thought that I would say this, but I'm rooting for Nancy Pelosi. Godspeed, Queen. If you can pull this off, Nancy, you might literally save American democracy. So <laughs> go, Nancy Pelosi. Whoever thought that in 2024, those words would be coming out of my fucking mouth. What a time to be alive, folks. Holy shit. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. Tree. <laughs> tree. Ain't like us. Tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs>